So we've already looked at the main setting up of the hair uh, and playing around with the clumps to get a better feel and look for each individual clump. Although the settings we've been playing with have adjusted the hair as a whole, you can go in and adjust each one individually. But we will look at that in a future video. What we're going to do in this one is just continue on looking down the options that we've got in our hair system and just seeing what they do and how we can use them to sort of sculpt and play around with the look and feel of the hair. So if we select the hair, go across to our hair system again. Now we looked at clump and hair shape here previously, so we're not going to go over that again. Uh, collisions we'll leave again for a future video. So let's look in dynamic properties. Now you, you would think that this would um, be more dynamics um, related. So for example, uh, it affects when the wind's blowing or if you've got some sort of uh, turbulence or something in the scene. But if you're working on this and it's going to be a illustration, so a static pose, you can use these dynamic properties and turbulence etc to get your hair into a pose that you want. Maybe you want her to be windswept, uh, a hair blowing all over the place. Um, and what, but just by adjusting the sliders in here, you can get that sort of effect without having to physically go in and sculpt the hair. So let's just work our way down. And again, let's go to our end solver, interactive playback, just so the hair starts to fall. And we can start to play around with these uh, settings and see them in real time in the viewport. So let's just scroll down. Now obviously stretch resistance, compression resistance, all these resistance uh, sliders here are going to stop the hair stretching, bending too much or twisting too much when the dynam dynamics affects it. So you're not really going to see much of those until we apply some dynamics to it. I mean we can we can try them for now. As you can see we drop that right down it's going to be no stretch resistance, so the hair's just going to go, just well, it's just going to stretch too much. So let's drop that back to 10. And there we go. Just let it settle. Compression resistance. So as you can probably tell, they're all pretty self-explanatory. So I'm not going to go into too much detail over those. Extra bend links. That just gives the hair more divisions so that it can bend more basically. Simple as that. Let's work our way down. We have our stiffness scale. Now again this is like the other graphs we were previously looking at and it will affect how stiff the hair can be from the root right to the tip and again you can go in and adjust these by just adding in extra curves but again until we add some dynamics to this you're probably not going to see much of it. Finally in this section well, not finally, sorry. Start curve attract. Now, we're going to look at curves probably in the next video, but basically every hair system, every clump has a NURBS curve. Uh, it's hidden at the moment, but there's a NURBS curve in there which dictates the start position, and you can also set a rest position. So if I stop this playback here, go back to the start, we can see this is the default start position. Start curve attract is going to try and get the hair to stay around where the start curve, start positions are. So again, if I turn on interactive playback, and then we adjust this start curve attract, you'll see the hair will spring back up to where the start position was. So this is if you want the hair to be stiffer, or like in, as you can see here, the hair is quite spiky. So that just helps to keep it stiff can maybe reduce that a little bit and it just sags a little bit and if you imagine the characters bouncing up and down the hair is going to bounce with it as well all while trying trying to stay near that start curve so as we work our way down we now come to the forces tab and again we can play around with this a little bit more once we get some actual movement into the hair what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off start curve attract just so the hair is a little bit more flexible so we're going to miss the forces for now and let's just go down to turbulence. What we're going to do in here is actually add some wind um, and some effect to the hair. We turn up the intensity, you can see, let's just ramp that right up. 
can see the hair's just moving all over, almost like snakes on her head. Bit of a Medusa sort of uh, feel there. We've got frequency and speed, so we can make that faster, slower, adjust the frequency. But at the moment, it doesn't look like much is happening. It's just, just like the hair's just wiggling all over the place. So this is where the nucleus comes into play. Now, the nucleus affects all the systems in the scene which are connected to it. So if you imagine the nucleus as sort of a global scene, uh, well, yeah, it affects everything in the scene, basically. We select the nucleus. Now, as we touched on previously, we've got our gravity in here, which is minus one, and set at 9.8, which is the default. But we've also got these settings here. So we can dictate wind speed. So let's turn that up. And the wind's going to start blowing. You can set a wind direction. At the moment, it's set to X. Let's just turn that turbulence down uh, down a little bit, just so we can see the nucleus playing with the hair. What I'm going to do is I am going to just make the hair a little bit longer. Maybe you need to just go. You need to go back to the start point. And there we go. interactive playback so what we should see is the hair being blown turn up the wind speed turn up the air density as you can see now the wind is being blown in the X direction so you can use this as I was saying before to start sculpting the hair if you want the character sitting there with the wind blowing from her right then you can use these to do it rather than going in and adjusting each and every curve. We can add noise to the hair, to, uh, to the wind, sorry. That gives it that subtle blow there. We can turn down the speed, like so. And obviously you can use these to adjust the direction. Minus one, you can set it to blow the opposite way. And now we can go back to our hair system and now we can start playing around with the turbulence. So now the hair's blowing all over the place. Got a nice bit of turbulence in there. We can turn up the speed, make it a bit faster, adjust the frequency as well. So once those are set, now we can come back to our forces here. And we can adjust the mass so we could make the hair heavier. Or we could make it lighter. We can adjust the drag. Motion drag, stretch, dampening, and the dynamics weight as well. If we drop the dynamics weight, not much is going to happen there. What we can also say is ignore, ignore the solver gravity. So the solver is currently the nucleus, which is connected to this. So we could turn off the gravity, turn off the wind, and it's just going to ignore those and go back to our uh, where we had it before, where it's just the turbulence. Turn the wind and the gravity back on from the nucleus and they come back into play like so. So that is just a quick look at the uh, the dynamics tab and starting to add in some hair and some, uh, well, just some motion and some life to the hair. And like I say, this is a quick way of just going in and being able to pose the hair so that you don't have to go in and physically edit the curves uh, and things like that. And again, just like everything else, feel free to take the scene and play around with these and just see what sort of effects you can get. Obviously, the hair's longer now than it was first, but that was just to demonstrate, uh, just so we could see the wind and the turbulence in motion. So what we'll probably do now is we will maybe, we've explored the nucleus, we've explored the main sections of the hair system, Everything else is going to be tied in a bit more to rendering. So we'll leave that until later on when we actually come to render the hair. What we'll probably do next is start to look at actually going in and editing the, the main curves of the hair. And this will allow us to cut the hair and style it a little bit more. And what we'll probably do there is we'll not use the dynamic systems as much. We will uh, focus more on physically going in and sculpting the hair.